Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Starting a Counseling Practice. This is Kelly Higdon, and I am joined today by Sarah Hadgraft. She's a counselor in Alabama, and she's been a boot camper for quite some time. But her story, I think, is inspiring on many, many levels. So thank you for being here and being willing to share your experience of private practice life and going into this field. You're welcome. Yeah. So (laughs) when we first met, uh, you weren't licensed yet. Right. So tell me about why you went into this field in general, because you didn't do that right out of the gate of life. Right. No, it, it was a second career. So I got a master's in 1995 to be a high school teacher. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I did that and I got married and then we had children. I was a stay at home mom for about 12 years. And then I went through a divorce. When I went through a divorce, I went back to school, um, not knowing I had to get a job. I didn't want to go into teaching Mm because I really wanted to be available to my girls. Um, And I I just thought I'm going to take a few counseling classes and see if I like it. Um, It always cracks me up that I went through a divorce and then got my marriage and family therapy license, (laughs) but that's what I did. Uh Uh, And while I was there, um, I was going through a divorce. So I studied children of divorce. So every paper, every presentation was selfishly for me and my family. And what I realized is that, um, that kids children of divorce are better when parents are talking and that mental health professionals are afraid to go into helping families of divorce because they're complicated and graduate school scares the heck out of us Mm -hmm. with testifying and lawyers and judges. And, you know, when I, when I had graduated from college, like in the early nineties, I had toyed with the idea of going to law school but I didn't do so well in that LSAT Mm -hmm. and it just is so serendipitous and divine in so many ways in my life that I'm sort of coming through and, and I now work with families of divorce and help lawyers and work with lawyers, but I do, I help families in a much more therapeutic way. So my niche has been to serve families of divorce and, or I'll say families in transition um, in all kinds of different capacities. Yeah. And when we first met, I remember a lot of us uh, talking, there's a lot of conversation around you having such a strong niche so early on. Most people out of grad school don't have that, I would say in a general broad stroke, Mm -hmm. but um, you had a lot of expertise and like you focused your training in that area. You've Mm -hmm. done a lot of research in that area. So when you started private practice, what was that like for you? Because in Alabama, you can be Mm pre-licensed and have a private practice. You just pay for your outside supervision. Mm -hmm. So what was that like for you to start a private practice pre-licensed? Working with lawyers, really scary. Mm -hmm. Um, Because a, a big value for me in the work that I do with families and just with working in the, with legal professionals is competency. And so I didn't feel competent. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, So training and specific trainings, that's, that's where I went. Even when I was still in graduate school, I started, um, I got trained to be a parent coordinator. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it was really scary, but I, I just, I often go back to, I want to serve these kids and mental health professionals are often, and sometimes rightly so afraid to get into this. Mm -hmm. Um, So, but I just. I tried to throw my fear aside and just put myself in. And so far it's been okay. Yeah. How was it starting a business? Uh, Well, the business part of it, like I had no idea how to start a business. So um, I found you guys, I, what, when I was close to graduating from graduate school and that was in 2015. And I thought it was a big investment. Um, but I always am a sucker for a lifetime access. <laughs> so when I understood the lifetime access, I was like, okay, that, that's something I'm really interested in. Now you could sign up for lifetime access and it, the, the, the library of resources doesn't grow. 
right? Mm. So you're sort of taking like a chance of I'm going to invest and hope that these people are going to build their resources. And man, you guys have done that. I mean, to the point where, you know, I'm building, still building my private practice, but if I need an inclement weather policy, I know where to go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's, it's stuff you don't think about until you're yeah. three years in where you're like, oh, I should probably talk to my clients about what happens when bad weather comes. What was the hardest part for you in terms of running the business? And what was the part that you loved about running a business? Oh, I mean, you told me today, Kelly, you got to look at your numbers. I hate numbers. <laughs> I hate the spreadsheets. Right. Now I like the numbers of what I'm making, but I hate the numbers of figuring out the expenses and projecting. And I just, that I'm still not comfortable with. And it's, uh-huh. and I've been in private practice since 2016, but I'm mm-hmm. still, I don't feel competent in that area. But place, I will say though, the number that you like looking at is because even though you don't like doing that stuff, you do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's true. And I like, it's, it's important to have the basis, you know, mm-hmm. of not just like, I can't think of any other way, but like a grab ass at mm-hmm. numbers. Like you have some sort of foundation mm-hmm. to go by. Um, mm-hmm. The best part, uh, I think the best part was, I didn't really think I could do this. Mm. I didn't really think I was strong enough to pull this off. And I wasn't really sure I was going to be good at working with families. And I think I, I am, I think I have some core beliefs that can really offer families of divorce, some good things. And, Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the best, that's one of the best parts for me. Mm. And now you are venturing into growing it into a group practice. Did you ever really plan on that originally? Hmm. Yes. And no, Mm. I I had a dream, um, I had a dream of maybe having a divorce center, um, but I w- always will say, but you know, I don't really know if that dream's going to come true. It's just, mm. you know, it's a goal. Um, but yeah, I mean, now it's growing where I have my first clinician and I'm learning how to be a boss and, um, and I would love for that. I would love for it to grow, but then I, I, I get like two step forward, like, oh, it's, it, I could really do this. And then I get scared and I have self doubt. So it's a constant, like two step mm-hmm. forwards, one step back. Mm-hmm. Thing. Do you feel like you did that in the first iteration of the practice? That it was a uh, that's too- my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think, I think it's like, can I really do this? Oh, I can do it. I, am I really doing this? Yeah. I think that's a, That's a Sarah mantra at times. Uh Mm Uh-huh. But at the same time, you make progress with it still. Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. I do. And I'll often say like, it's only failure if you don't learn from it. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I I fail. I try to take the opportunity to learn something from it. Mm -hmm. So in growing into group practice, what have been some of the lessons you've learned most recently as to like doing this in a way that fits you Mm. and your vision? Um, gosh, well, um, there are parts of marketing I like, and there are parts that I don't. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think, I think one of the things is learning to be patient with myself that at different seasons, I'm going to have more space and margin to give than I am in other seasons. Um, I think this is a particularly difficult season for me um, with my personal life. And so trying to get like a work-life balance and figuring out what am I really willing to put into this Mm -hmm. um, and not, and, and it's less becoming more about, it's less becoming about the money I'm making, which I think I didn't think I could be profitable in mental health field, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's becoming more about me and, um, Like, I still want to come home and have something left for the people that I love. Mm -hmm. I still want that. Those relationships are way more important than my relationships with my clients or building my business. But it's really easy to, when you start to become successful, to lose that focus because Mm -hmm. you're good at it. Mm -hmm. Um, Not to say that I was good at it, but there have been parts I have enjoyed. And so um, I think that's been something I'm still figuring out and learning. 
Mm -hmm. Well, I think too, that as the demands or the situations within the family context, I don't know if you're okay me sharing, I'm going to share and we can edit it out. Yeah, that's like like you've remarried (laughs) since Mm -hmm. all of this, you Mm -hmm. know, your kids have grown up more. There's an, uh, like through each season, then you get to pull back and evaluate what needs to change in the business in order for me to continue to have, to, to meet the needs of my situation um, right. in life, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. When I first came in, I was very fearful about money. Mm-hmm. And it was, I was real focused on that. And I think um, I'm also caring for my parents who are elderly. Um, and yeah, there's just a lot more demand on my time. I think it's, it's getting clear that my time is a commodity that sometimes can't be bought mm-hmm. by a client. Mm-hmm. So let that sink in for a minute. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a big lesson. It is. It yeah. is a big lesson. Yeah. What are you most proud of? I mean, as we're talking about the whole journey, because I've known, I know you back when and, and, and to see where you are now, are you able to hold um, on to the wins? Yeah. I mean, I think, well, I think part of it is I'm proud of just seeing my strength and what mm-hmm. I'm able to, um, what I've been able to accomplish. Um, in such a short amount of time. I'm also really proud. I have three daughters. I'm so proud of them. And one's moving today out of state. Mm. So in just like an hour or two, Mm. um, but I'm really proud that they get to see a mom who's been through a lot of pain, um, with their divorce, with our, my divorce with their dad, but that was resilient to try to build something for herself. Um, I'm really proud of that part of my story that I didn't let my divorce become my whole story, that it was a chapter and it was a really painful chapter. But I often tell my clients, if I wouldn't have gone through that, I wouldn't be sitting with you here. Right. So yeah, that's, that's huge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that that story is the part that I hope inspires whoever's listening to this, because there is something about divorce and uh, revisioning life forward and building a business when there is no, not a lot of other support. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a common thing that comes up for a lot of boot campers. I know that we have a lot of boot campers that are going through that, that it's, again, it doesn't define them. It's a chapter. I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I was coming out of being a stay at home mom which I loved. I Mm -hmm. loved getting lunch with my friends and (laughs) taking naps in the afternoon. (laughs) I mean, there was a part that I really loved, but there was also a part where I realized my gifts were not being utilized. They Mm -hmm. were with my children, but I had other gifts to give people. Mm -hmm. And so um, I do feel like my gifts are being utilized now in in different Mm -hmm. ways. Where would you say is your new growth edge? So, you know, you've learned how to run the business, you know, some of your weaknesses and strengths, but where are you pushing yourself to grow now as a private practice owner? Uh, Gosh, Um, I'd say in learning how to manage a team Mm -hmm. is a big um, thing because I, I want to do this well. I want to be honorable and transparent, but also a good leader. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, um, that that's important to me. And then, uh, learning, still learning marketing and how to market myself in different ways. And then I, and then the last like real growth edge would just be starting to get comfortable with numbers and spreadsheets and projections and yeah, because when you move into the group practice, then we're talking about pay scales and, yep. Yep. and you know, if you were to ever do other things with the business beyond just the therapy services, the numbers start to get bigger and mm-hmm. juicier and more complex for sure. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I love that. I think that's something I appreciate about you is that you mm-hmm. constantly evolve, mm-hmm. you know, and that you don't stop growing. Yeah. So if there's I any, think- go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I think I've, I've learned too, just coaching, like 
my coaching time with you has evolved. If I, do you want me to, can I talk about that for yeah, you? Can. <laughs> yeah, okay. sure. I mean, this is like breaking. Cause I just have reflected on this that like in the first year, I felt like you were like a rock star and like, oh my God, just download everything to me. I just need everything. And the mm-hmm. second year, it felt more like a teacher where I was like, I just wanted you to be proud of me. And so mm-hmm. I was just going to steer conversation so you could be proud of me. <laughs> and this year, I'm like, it's time to get real and have difficult conversations. And she's here. She's not here to shame you to get you're not mm-hmm. in trouble, but she's here to direct you and help you grow your practice in the kind of practice you want. And I think it's taken me three years to get to that place and kind of slow down a little bit. Yeah. I think that there's, um, so you shared this with me before too. So it's not new for me hearing it right now on the podcast, but I think there is something too about how we evolve in our learning Mm -hmm. um, and how we choose to grow in our practice that yes, initially there's this flood me with information, Mm -hmm. but then it's getting in touch with our own wisdom Mm -hmm. and discerning what is for us and what is not for us. So that eventually whatever that knowledge is that you acquire, you assimilate it and that you can continue to carry it on and evolve it and not, you know, not have this like feeling like you have a crutch, you know, or something like that. Ultimately building the best business for you comes from within. Mm-hmm. like there's tools, there's skills, there's best practices, but then it all has to morph to what is best within you. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's where I'm starting to, to get to, too. in this practice is, is that, um, you, Sarah, you have the skill to make money, mm-hmm. but at what cost? And right. so what, what are you willing to do and what are you willing to not do? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, for anyone listening to this story, um, and who is, in private practice or contemplating it, do you have any final words of encouragement to to your other colleagues that are Mm. in this journey? Mm. Well, I guess I would say, uh, okay, I I would say really be patient with yourselves and give yourself permission to to just be where you're at. Mm -hmm. Um, Find a really good support team that you can knock some ideas around um, that are other therapists that will support you and be like, yeah, that's not a crazy question that actually I've dealt with that too. You're not crazy for thinking mm-hmm. that. Um, and then, I mean, I would say the resource of boot camp, it's been huge for me because I didn't know how to build a practice. I didn't know how to build a private practice as a therapist. I didn't know anything about that marketing, um, informed consents. I mean, it was all new to me. So I also didn't want to reinvent the wheel. I'm like, there are people out there way smarter than me that have already done this, that can show me how to do it. And it's, that was an investment for me. And it, it took off a lot more time so that it was already done. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, thank you for being on here. You're welcome. And sharing your story. Where can people check you out? Uh, my website is sparrow, like the bird sparrow council, C O U N S E L.com. Sweet. Yeah. And if you need a consult, Sarah also does consultation for, if you're going to work with those divorced families and co-parenting and reunification and oh my goodness, it just goes, there's a lot <laughs> involved. I'm always amazed at all the things that you do. So thank you for sharing your story. And if you're new to the podcast, please you know, subscribe, listen to other stories in here. You will find bits of yourself and others. And you'll also glean lots of, of lessons already learned. And we'd love to have you join our community. It's free. Sarah's in there. The rest of people on the podcast are in there. It's a free community with free training. So check that out and we'll see you next time.